What's up, y'all? Welcome to another React video. This one is, um, it was described to me as possibly the most disturbing, uh, true crime video ever made. Um, I don't really know. I haven't seen it, but I, I guess I gotta say if you're, if you get creeped out by or scared or anything of stuff like this, maybe, maybe this isn't the video for you. I ain't mad at you. You could go ahead and swipe away. We got plenty more videos that are a whole lot lighter. Um, but yeah, we're going to react to this together. <clears throat> there ain't really too much I can say. So I guess let's just jump into it. Well, it looks like blood in there. And it's not blood. It's deer meat. Shotgun shells all over the side. Yeah. Holy. In all the cases we've covered on this channel, this case is by far the most upsetting we've come across. What? F See, like hearing stuff like that, it Loki, it Loki got me scared because this is a true crime channel. I mean, like, I'm, a, I'm gonna hit him in crime with a, with a sub, and I know what y'all think. It's probably just to fluff up the video, but. Usually channels like this don't do stuff like that. So it got me a little nervous. I ain't gonna cap. My eye is twitching. Do y'all see that? What's going on? Follows his never before seen body cam footage as police make a routine traffic stop and discover a truly chilling scene. We'll also show you exclusive security footage capturing the victim's last moments alive. But first, an investigative report on what led up to this tragic incident and the many ways it could have been prevented. Be warned, we will be covering the flaws in child protective services surrounding abusive parents and why those services need to focus more on helping the victims in these cases over their abusers. So. Oh man, so this is about a little kid. So this is about a little kid. So she did something to her kid. Mm. Mm. I don't like that, bro. This may seem straightforward, but domestic situations can become very complicated in cases where the abuser is the parent of a victim. Let's step back a moment and get some background on what exactly led up to this heinous crime. In December of 2015, Julissa Thaler and Tori Hart's child, Eli Kenneth Alejo Hart, was born. However, their relationship quickly went south. Court summons suggest that Julissa has a long history of substance abuse, including suspicions that she exposed Eli to a controlled substance while she was pregnant. The next line in the... Okay, so, so I think we got to talk about this. I know y'all are sick of me pausing, but... I never understood people who do drugs while they're pregnant, bro. Come on, dog. Like, I get it. I, I understand that, that that drug addiction is a real problem, and some people really do need help. But, bro, when, you, when you're when you pregnant, when you, you're carrying a baby, it is no longer about you, dog. It's not about you no more. I feel like that's one of the most selfish things you can do. I, I, I mean, I, I feel like that goes without saying, right? Summons mentions Eli's genetic disorder, Towns Brock syndrome, which left baby Eli with hearing loss and cleft feet. At this time, Julissa filed police complaints against Tori. She later admitted to the complaints being false and that because of her mental health issues, she constantly accuses Hart of things that he doesn't do. After years of custody battles and allegations of abuse, Julissa and Tori undergo court-ordered evaluations. For years, Julissa gains custody of Eli but struggles with homelessness. In October 2020, Dakota County Social Services find Eli at Julissa's decrepit home, naked and without hearing aids. The social worker on scene could not locate shoes or clothes for Eli outside of a single set of pajamas. DCSS found a flooded upper floor bathroom, eggs broken and smeared throughout the main level, and food in various stages of decay around the main floor. Julissa what? is hospitalized for mental health issues, but Eli is returned to her care afterward. Around three How do you return a baby back into that? How, how do you get, how do you, how do, like, how do you have the heart, right? To take a child away from a situation like that. And then now you got to tell that kid, all right, you got to go back. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, it's, that's insane, bro. Like, mm. Months later, Child Protective Services again took Eli and placed Julissa into custody on a mental health and welfare hold. 
Julissa was presenting signs of psychosis and claims that she was hearing voices related to self-harm, among other paranoid delusions. This time, Eli was found with matted hair, cuts on his arms, and without his hearing aids. According to a court summons, Dakota County Judge Timothy Wormiger found it contrary to the welfare of Eli to permit him to remain in Julissa's care because of these eight reasons, which includes Eli's risk of harm, his lack of food. Hold on, let's read these. Eli is in... An unstable environment and at risk of harm, Eli was in danger because of conditions related to mental mental health or behavioral issues of Thaler. Eli was left without the necessary food, clothes, shelter, and educational care. Uh, Thaler's criminal activity in the home, Thaler's inability to meet Eli's specific needs, including her failure to maintain Eli's required specialist and audi audiologic uh, aud audio ID uh, <laughs> audiology appointments. Thaler's uh, diagnosis of psychosis, Thaler's presentation to a hospital with psychosis and hearing voices telling her to kill herself, that Thaler was placed on a psychological hold. Food, clothing, shelter, and education, along with Julissa's criminal history and psychosis. Over the next few years, Julissa again and again proves she's not fit to be a parent. Throughout, Tori continuously signals to officials his concerns, which continue to go unheard. Okay, so I'm just making sure I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure Tori is the father. I just had to say that out loud to get myself to understand. Okay, Tori's the father. Here okay. are just a few things Julissa has done, according to a court summons and numerous reports. Julissa told a story of dropping Eli's sippy cup off the side of a cliff in Colorado when he was younger. Her solution? She tied a rope to herself and climbed down to get it, leaving Eli unattended, open to the possibility of him falling off the cliff to his death. Bro, what? 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 So you just going you just going to shimmy down the edge of a cliff because your kid dropped a sippy cup. Meanwhile, leaving the kid at the top of the cliff alone. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. And y'all think that y'all know all of these things, right? Y'all just gave us eight reasons why he was removed and yet y'all still sent him back. During visitation, Julissa berated Eli for the problems in her life and relationship, blaming him for the rotten food in her home, even after rotten food continued to exist in her household after Eli was taken into foster care. Julissa told a social worker she can't eat or sleep and that she was living off Mountain Dew and cigarettes. After Julissa's visitations, Eli would have bathroom accidents, which was not typical for him. Julissa showed Eli disturbing videos she took of cat feces, along with images of naked women. Julissa Bro, I, how is this kid still even, like, allowed to be around this woman? The gifted Eli a smart watch and would call and text him during Tori's visitation time. In the time Julissa needed to better herself for the court to gain custody of Eli, she had the police called on her over 20 times in a 10-month span. Julissa set up a noise machine in her home because she believed neighbors were spying on her. Julissa submitted numerous false police reports of Tori, claiming he was stalking her and was on methamphetamines. Both these accusations and more were disproven. During DCSS visits to her home, Julissa was found to be raising ducks in her living space, despite her attempts to hide them during bro, inspections. this lady Two is clearly crazy, bro. her out for causing problems. Julissa reportedly drove erratically when dropping Eli off at school, speeding on multiple occasions, and supposedly left tire marks on school grounds. While at school, Eli told teachers he didn't sleep the night before when he was with Julissa. His behavior also reportedly dropped dramatically at school when he was under her care. Julissa lied to the court about buying tickets to Disney World and did so in hopes that it would expedite the custody process to allow her to leave the state with Eli. Julissa stole prescription drugs and during court-ordered drug test, she consistently failed. She also failed to keep up with court-ordered therapy sessions and parenting classes for over a year and was given multiple 60-day extensions by the court to fulfill those requirements. Throughout all of Julissa's troublesome actions, Tori voiced his concerns for years to officials for the sake of Eli's safety. According to a court summons, here's some communications Tori sent to mm. officials about his custody case and Julissa's actions. I do have concerns with her mental state that she could do something drastic. The whole purpose of this is to protect Eli, yet I feel he is now being put at risk. What kind of damage is this doing to Eli? This is terrifying to me and upsets me that Eli continues to have to go through this. So this is a this is an issue that I have with the court system. And I ain't got no kids. I ain't never been through this. So maybe somebody in the comments can let me know if y'all have. But I feel like it is such a common thing for the court to want to side with the mother. 
regardless. Regardless if the dad is a more fit parent, if the mother is not fit at all, the goal is to keep the child with his mother. And I understand it, right? Usually when 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 if you put up two good parents on a bulletin board, usually the mother is more necessary for a child's development. But that doesn't mean that you force a kid to be with his mother, even if she's crazy. And that's what it feels like right here. Like, like everybody knew, everybody knew what was going to happen. Everybody knew what was going to happen. And because she's the mother, they made him go back. That's how I feel. How is this okay? How will Dakota County monitor Eli's safety and well-being? Hold up, I ain't got no audio. Now, Eli is in danger every day he is with her. My son is not safe with her. Who is protecting Eli? Even Eli's caregiver addressed concerns to officials saying, I feel so bad for Eli. I feel he will be injured or worse being back with his mom. Due to Julissa's false allegations against Tori, he agreed to comply with a safety and permanency plan in order to secure permanent custody of Eli. This included completing domestic violence and parenting classes, randomized drug Why testing, does he have to do a all mental of this? health assessment, and adhering to an order for protection. In contrast to Julissa, Tori fulfilled all requirements. DCSS reported positive visitations with Tori, noting Eli's happiness, energy, and enjoyment so then during what, their like time together. According to a court summons, DCSS reports can be quoted that, during these visits with Mr. Hart, Eli is noticeably smiling, talkative, energetic, and he seems to enjoy them. Despite the countless negative reports on Jalissa and the positivity and capability of parenting shown by Tori, the court system continually pushed for reunification of the child with their, their mother over the father. Okay. See, that's exactly what I was saying. They're going to push the kid to be toward their mother, even if it ain't a good fit. But... Obviously, I'm not trying to, I don't even know, I don't even know what happened, but it seems like they are setting up that the cops knew, or not the cops, but the the system knew exactly what was going to happen, and it happened. So I'm assuming she did something to this baby, right? When it was as clear, like, the, why not give the kid to the father? And make the mom go through all of these rigorous tests if she wants to get custody. Why not give the father the benefit of the doubt and not the mother when she's showing signs that she should not get the benefit of the doubt? Fast forward to March 2022. Tory filed for custody of Eli in Hennepin County Court, possibly to change the jurisdiction due to concerns about the current court's handling of the case. However, Hennepin Court said they couldn't grant custody due to the ongoing case in mm. Dakota County and could only the move forward trying. if the Chips case were to be dismissed. He's Within trying to days, do everything the court he moved can. to dismiss the Chips file. Unbelievably, on May 4th, 2022, the same defendant who filed all those negative reports against Julissa pushed to remove Eli from court supervision and into reunification with Julissa. Reports made on a later date cited the defendant had no immediate concern for Eli's physical well-being wow. at the time. At really? this point, Eli had been in foster care for four I Really? I'm a YouTuber. I'm a, I'm a social media guy, and I have concerns about his well-being. What did you go to all this school for? If you could look at all of that evidence and be like, nah, he'll be all right. Come on, dog. 166 days. Despite the recorded evidence that Julissa was not fit to parent Eli, Dakota County Judge Tim Wormiger removed Eli from the county's protection on May 10th, 2022. Court summons show that a Dakota County social worker and one of Eli's court-appointed guardians both recommended that Julissa be reunified with her son. Adding more devastation to this case, a hearing was set for the very next day on May 11th as an opportunity for Tori to raise immediate concerns to prevent the reunification. Unfortunately, the hearing was canceled, robbing Tori of this valuable opportunity. Six days later on May 17th, receipts show Jalissa would purchase a shotgun with what was likely oh, dozens of no. rounds along with a revolver. The receipt even thanks her by name for the purchase. Oh, Just three no. days later on May 20th, 2022, Jalissa would be found driving a vehicle that was missing a tire and had its back window smashed open. Officers would soon pull her over. Hey. I'm gonna make a prediction. That looks like something a shotgun would do. She better not have used a shotgun on this.
After a few minutes, two officers approach her vehicle from either side. According to police reports, the officers noticed shotgun shells, blood in the vehicle, and on Julissa herself, and what appeared to be gunshot holes in the back of the car seat. Julissa herself seems overly calm about the whole situation. According to police reports, she claimed the blood on her came from removing a tampon. Other suspicious claims. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. She. I don't, I don't even want to say it. were also made by Jalissa, as seen from this limited body cam footage. There is no tire there. All right. No, blood. There's oh, what? There's blood all over the car. Violation. I have a broken windshield missing a tire because some kids were shooting at my car. I had some what well, looks like blood in there. And it's not blood. It's deer meat. I had a big bag of... Bro, I, I, look, look, bro. She needs to be put underneath the jail. She just said it's deer meat. It's deer meat? How could you do something like that to your own kid and then scream out it's deer meat? It ain't no deer meat. Um, there's a farm around here that does deer meat and hamburgers. So. Shotgun shells all over this. Yeah. Despite the incredibly questionable yeah. scene the officers discovered Julissa in, the officers decided to release her, personally chauffeuring her. They decided to release her? All right, somebody got to say it. What if they pull, if they pull me over? If they pull me over and they found the car in that state with that in it, are they going to release me? Let's be real. Let's be real. That's crazy, bro. Her a ride home to her apartment. The officers who work in Hennepin County, home to Minneapolis, also may have feared getting a complaint from the woman, factoring into their decision making. According to news reports, the search warrant for Jalissa's vehicle indicated the police released her because she was growing impatient, cold, and refused to sit in the squad. Back at the blood-soaked vehicle, officers developed probable cause. I don't care what a she's growing. Of the vehicle. Yeah. Holy we got a body. Yeah. All right, let's oh, cover. Oh, man. According to reports, officers rushed back to the apartment where they just dropped Julissa off. They discovered she was no longer there. She left a wash. That is, that is. Uh, they just released her. They released her without even searching the car, dog. She got she got her kids uh RIP'd body in the in the trunk. And they let her go after finding uh blood all over her, blood in the car, shotgun shells, a blown out window, no tire on the car. Y'all just let her go. Come on, she man. Running with what was later determined to be filled with the clothes she was just wearing. Who is Soon running after, this place? Officers located Julissa leaving the area on foot, and she was placed under arrest. Officers then observed that she had what appeared to be brain matter in her hair. Based off witness statements and off the physical damage her vehicle left on the road, officers were able to track the past movements of the vehicle. Bro, this Along this it. route, they found multiple locations where blood and brain matter had been discarded. One dumpster had a bloody child booster seat that had sustained damage from a shotgun blast in a listen bro listen bro this is a this is a baby bro this is a baby bro nobody deserves this but this is a baby bro oh another dumpster Get officers my blood located pressure a up. backpack blood bone and what appeared to be more brain matter we've elected to not show the photos containing blood or human remains in court more shocking evidence would come out against julissa according to a source from care 11 these are some of the search terms from julissa's browser history which includes how much blood can a six-year-old lose how life insurance investigates a death claim you know what I usually don't believe in stuff like this, but I, I, I was I was genuinely like mentally giving her the benefit of the doubt. She genuinely is showing signs that she is crazy, bro. And I don't say that a lot when when I watch stuff like this. But I don't believe that. No, look what she's Googling. She knew what she was doing. How much blood can a six year old lose, dog? Most expensive life insurance for children.
and how much does life insurance pay for a dead child among other damning searches how to commit a crime and blame a child it was later determined that julissa had shot eli nine times in the head and torso area of his body likely while he was strapped in his car nine times with a sh with a shotgun if if y'all don't know what a shotgun does Go and watch somebody shooting a shotgun at a watermelon, okay? And and I don't even want to tell you to imagine what that would do to what's in this video. I don't even, I, like, the picture I have in my head is not. I, I Look, I, I consider myself a good person. I, I am a God-fearing man. I love, I love Jesus Christ. But. Something like that. It's hard for me not to wish the absolute worst things on this woman. The absolute worst things humanity has to offer. That's what's running through my head right now. Car seat. Thorough work by police and detectives also uncovered surveillance video showing Eli being escorted by Jalissa in the moments prior to his murder. The video, Look at that, which bro. shows the boy smiling and playing, would tragically He's so be trusting. the last video of the child. Bro, he, he, that's his mama. He trusts her with his life, dog. That's crazy. At one point, Jalissa's own grandmother and father even disagreed with the handling of the custody case leading up to the murder. Jalissa's grandmother claimed Tori doesn't have a mean bone in his body and said of her granddaughter Jalissa that she is good at manipulating people. And I blame the court system for not helping her out. We all told like like his own mama like like i mean her own mama her own mama is saying don't give this kid back to her don't give him back to her send him to his daddy well the social workers that I, I i'm sorry there's a lot of blame to go around here there's a whole lot of blame to go around here and somebody needs to be losing their job somebody does she needs to be institutionalized not just for a month but maybe for a year or more but nobody listened. Julissa's father said, I gave the judge her detailed mental health history. I told him that she was displaying paranoia and auditory hallucinations. I said I feared for Eli's safety. It all fell on deaf ears. Julissa did not mince words with how she felt about the situation. Ms. Scholar, you have a right to speak this morning. If you'd like, you don't have any obligation to speak, but if you'd like to choose to speak, now is the time to do it. Yes, I would like to say something. Go ahead. Um. I'm innocent. Fuck you all. You're garbage. Hold up, bro. Hold up, bro. I just want to deck her. Oh, my God, bro. I just want to deck her. Look at her lawyer. Her own lawyer. Look at her lawyer, bro. Clearly, Julissa's lawyer isn't mm. too happy right, that's about crazy. her choice of words. Miss Sorry, I don't know that that's appropriate here. Um, Sorry, I told you what somebody else said. Bro, shut up. Julissa mm. Thaler was sentenced with first degree. I'm about, I'm, I'm about to get my video demonetized, dog. Like, degree <laughs> predetermined murder heated. and second degree intentional murder for shooting Eli no less than nine times. She has received life in prison without the possibility of parole. Okay. 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 So. I don't know how y'all feel about the death penalty. Me personally. I feel like for the for the most extreme, extreme, extreme cases, right? The one percent of cases, that's when the death penalty is needed. But if this don't fall under that, what does? What does? If this does not fall under the one percent, then what does? Uh, Currently, Tori is in the process of I'm suing pressed, the defendants bro. and a caretaker of pressed. Eli, who continue to suggest reuniting Eli with Julissa. That outcome is yet to be determined. Unfortunately, this is not the only case of this nature that was mishandled by Minnesota. And look, I, I look, I, I, yeah, this is going to talk about something else. This usually happens in these videos, but. Ah, that was a tough one. I love you guys, man. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if I should do more like this. I love y'all. Y'all y'all stay y'all stay up. Stay healthy. I love y'all. Bye.